Welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner. This is another Photoshop Elements 11 video tutorial. Now in today's tutorial we're going to talk about as the title I'm sure already clued you in is picture in picture. Now what that is is when we combine two pictures together to make one. And we do this a lot of times because you can take a picture of somebody outside and maybe the background is not too pleasing and you say well we're going to go ahead and um, change the background and put something more interesting in and that is what we were doing this morning now in this particular picture you can see here that i included the uh, female model we have here with a bookcase in the background so it's very nice you can find your backgrounds in a ton of places uh, you can get them from uh, any time any type of imaging site just be sure to check the licensing information of the images that you're using so what we're going to do here first of all is we're going to take this picture and we're going to revert it back to our actual um, standard pictures that it was. So let's go up here and we're going to go edit and revert. So we're going to revert that. And then what we're going to do is go back over here to our original uh, models picture and we're going to do the same thing here. We are going to go up to edit and revert because I want to start over and show you exactly what I did to get to this picture. The first thing we have to do is we have to take whoever or whatever the picture is and we have to take the background out of the picture, right? We want to remove the background and make the background transparent. So to do that on this picture, it's very easy because it's a more solid background. So it was really easy to do and I'm going to show you that now. So I am in the Photoshop Elements 11, but this will work in other versions, whatever version you may have. We're going to use the quick uh, magic wand tool here. So the selection tool is lit up here and down at the bottom on our tool panel here, we are going to uh, click on the magic wand tool. And with that magic wand tool selected, we are going to go over here and make sure it's continuous on this checkbox right here. So it will continue with as much as the main colors it's going to find. We're going to go to a new selection and we're just going to click on the background. And as you can already see, the background is pretty much selected and it's pretty decent, but we're going to add to that selection. So we're going to come over here and click on add to selections, the second little double white lines here and click right here to add to the selection and click in the back to add that. Now you want to pay particular attention. A lot of times when you're making these selections, if it sees any white on your model's face, it could also pick up some of that. So you may want to subtract some of this right over here. You don't want an indentation on the model's face when you're moving the picture to put it in another picture or the person you're working with. Okay, now that you have that selected, right here I see there's something here that looks like it's not selected. We're going to add that right here. It must have seen a piece of the hair. And the selection looks pretty good. Now what we want to do is do a Control or a Command I. And that's going to invert the selection command or control I or we can go up here to select and we can do inverse and we can inverse it that way so there's two different ways you can invert your selection once you have that inverted now I want you to hit command or control J to take the person out of the background and if you click over here now you'll see that the background is in fact transparent. Now we have that background transparent. What we want to do now is we want to come over to our background image that we're going to use for a background and we want to clean this up a bit. And what I mean by that is I notice there's some wall in here and I don't want the wall to show so I'm going to just clean this up a little bit. I'm going to use my crop tool and I'm just going to crop the bookcase out. I just want the bookcases all I really want. I don't need the wall or the carpet here because it can throw off the actual uh, illusion that she was in front of this bookcase. All right. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. That's my uh, mouse is very touchy. I'm going to have to straighten that out. But Okay. Now we have the bookcase. We are going to bring this bookcase up just a little bit more right there. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to bring our picture of our model or bring our picture of our person into our new scene. So to do that, all we got to do is go back to the layer 
up here on the top. If you click on the tabs, we're back on layer one. And we're just going to go up to select all, or you can do a command or control A, and that will select everything there. And we're going to do an edit, and we're going to copy, and then go back to our bookcase, and do an edit, and we're going to paste. Now right away you're going to notice here that the photo is very big. Now if we try to resize this, I'm going to show you a trick here. So if you try to click on the resize tool over here, the move tool, and do this, watch what happens. You can in fact take your person and distort them to the point that they're going to look really, really bad. Because what's going to happen is if you do not have, right down here in the bottom where it says, constrained proportions if that is not checked what's going to happen is you can actually make the person thinner because this box here will look make the person thinner all right all right now go back to view here and fit the screen okay so if i fit it to screen you can see here where it's sitting all right i'm going to cancel that and let's see here And bring us back up here again so we canceled that now what we want to do is instead of just using the move tool which works and you can go down and click on constrained proportions I like to use image resize and scale when I do that I like to make sure the scale is set on constrained proportions and now I can actually scale this picture however I want to scale it Oop. pull this back over here and I can start scaling the picture down just by dragging the top corner, either the left or the right. It doesn't matter, whichever corner you want to drag. And we're going to drag this down here. And, you know, this happens because of different resolutions. happens with different cameras you take. Uh, the backdrops I suggest when you grab your backdrops from any website out there you're grabbing them from, grab the largest resolution you can find. And you'll know right away if you did not because it'll look like a little thumbnail and it will look be, uh, the resolution will be very poor is what's going to happen. So there we go. All right. So we're getting her down to the size we want to get it to here. And we're looking, pulling it up, and we're going to go down some more. See where the bottom here is. Oop. Again, you want to always make sure you're driving from the corner. And we'll see where we're at. Still just a little bit taller than what I wanted, so I, you know you have to envision this stuff here and see where you're at. Make sure that is still selected here. Okay. All right. Then pull it back because it, she we had her square on the backdrop here, so let's pull her back a little bit. We're gonna make her just a little bit taller. Again, watch your proportions whenever you're uh, doing this. Okay, then simply click the checkbox when you have uh, the person put in where you want them put. Now I'm going to show you a trick because if you can see there's a little halo effect here. You see that little bright light around here? That is still from the white background. All right, we want to clean that up to make this look, look like even more of a, of a uh, professional edit. Now here's what I'm going to show you though. This is kind of interesting because most people would go over here and grab the background eraser, which is going to work. We click on layer one and we can erase. All right, let me just start erasing here. And you can see it will, in fact, I'm working up here on the left edge with my uh, with my Wacom tablet. And you can see it does work. Watch what happens though. Oops. Okay, that is not very forgiving. You're not going to fix that. You have to do an undo, undo, undo to fix it. So let's do an undo and put everything back here. Let's go back to image. Um, okay, let's fix that. All right. Instead of doing that, what I would suggest you do at this point is add a layer mask. Now, if you go up here to the top, you're going to see you have a new layer. We have layer styles right here, adjustment layers. And we have layer mask. Click on the layer mask and paint with black. So we're going to grab a paintbrush here. And we're going to come over here. And we're going to just start painting with black over the part you want to hide because what happens is with the layer mask I'm sure you know but when you paint with what you want to hide it's revealing underneath is what it's doing so 
Now, it's very forgiving, and let me show you this. A layer mask is very forgiving, because if we're in here, we go, uh-oh, oh, oh goodness, we messed that up. We'll just revert, and we'll paint with white. If we paint with white, we can get it right back. See, with that eraser, you can't do this. It won't do the same thing, so we can get it back. Then flip our colors back over, and we're going to come up here, and again, just start going over the hair, just real lightly, just where you want to get rid of that white. Also, if there's any strands of hair, you can take those off. You can clean those up a little bit. So, there you go. And at the top here, the same thing. We're just going to clean her hair up on the top a little bit. Right up here. Just like so. Next thing you know, you can have a beautiful picture ready to go in the frame and uh, hang on your wall. We can actually come over here. We're going to actually cut some of this hair out too right here. Just to clean it up a little bit. Okay. Now if we go view, fit on screen. There we go. So there's your edit for your picture in picture. It's very easy to do. And, you know, just take your time. The, the better the selection you make before you move it, the easier it is to clean it up at the end. That's the main thing you're looking at. Well, folks, I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial on Picture in Picture uh, with me here. I'm your host, Jack, and this is Jack's Tech Corner. And if you're interested, by all means, check out my website, jackstechcorner.com. You'll find some great uh, DVD selections there with Photoshop Elements. And Elements 10 is the latest uh, that's up there right now. Um, but all those edits from Elements 10 or the three version sets are going to work just fine in Elements 11. Don't let that bother you. It's, it's still going to work very, uh, very efficiently, and you'll be able to do all those edits, plus more. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you here next time. Until then, keep those shutters clicking, keep your editors editing, and I'll see you back here very soon for another Photoshop Elements or Photo tutorial. Thanks, and bye for now.